Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at the, um, the enzyme NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase, and we saw that through a series of electron transfers, it ultimately um, reduced ubiquinone to ubiquinol. What we're going to do in this video is look at a very similar enzyme, and it's similar in the mechanism by which it transfers electrons, and this enzyme is called succinate dehydrogenase. You may say, well, wait a second, I've seen that enzyme before. I've seen it in the TCA cycle. And you'd be right, this is the same enzyme in the TCA cycle. Although when we did the TCA cycle, we left out a very large portion of this enzyme. We left out a lot on this enzyme. And so here's what we left off. So first of all, let me draw succinate. Let me draw succinate. And recall that succinate is going to get oxidized to fumarate. So here's my trans bond. Right. Okay. So succinate is going to get oxidized to fumarate. And so in other words, this alkane is getting oxidized to an alkene. So something else has to get reduced. And if you remember from the TCA cycle, that molecule was flavonadenine dinucleotide. So I generated reduced flavonadenine dinucleotide. And let's actually, let's actually look at the structure of it to see exactly what's happening. And I think what you're going to find is, in the last video, we looked at FMN, flavin mononucleotide, and FAD8, or, or FAD, actually comes from FMN biosynthetically, so they look very similar. So right here, I ha I'm, I'm drawing my dimethyl isooxazine ring, right? But the main difference, the main difference between FAD and FMN is the presence of an AMP group. What's the AMP group? Well, it ultimately creates a pyrophospholinkage, a pyrophospholinkage between the flavin mono or between this ribotyl group. It creates a pyrophosphal linkage between this ribotyl group and this adenosine. And this adenosine. And let me finish drawing the ring over here. So let's actually just, for now, let's actually break up exactly what this molecule is. Okay, so up here... Up here, the, um, if I was to cut it off right there, this right here is called a di, dimethyl isooxazine. Dimethyl isooxazine ring. Right here, if I was to cut this off, sort of right here, this is my ribotyl group. That's my ribotyl group. If I was to cut this right there, this would be my pyro, pyrophosphate linkage. And then, of course, over here is adenosine. However, it, the, the functional part of FAD, the functional part is the dimethyl isooxazine ring. And specifically, it's this area right here. This is the functional part. And so what, I would, what I'll do is, is, actually, let me... Actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to abbreviate this. I'm just, I'm just going to draw the, isoalox, the dimethyl isooxazine ring. But what you would have is something very similar to FA, FMN. And what you'll see is that um, the, the organic mechanism of the reduction is exactly the same. Is exactly the same as FMN. So the reduction is the same mechanism. And actually, this should be a ketone or a carbonyl right there. Okay, so there is my my FAD, and ultimately this right here is the reduced version. Notice the double bond is right here, and I picked up two protons. Okay, 
So ultimately, in succinate dehydrogenase, we always mention that there's an FADH2. Okay. Well, the FADH2 is not the terminal electron acceptor. There's, there's, a, there's another terminal electron acceptor, but before we get to that, we're going to do a mechanism that's almost identical um, to, to what we saw in NADH dehydrogenase. So we're going to have a series of iron sulfur centers. This is the oxidized version, and it's going to get reduced. Right? And just like in the last video, they're going to... There's a series of these iron sulfur centers, and they're going to cycle between ferric and ferrous states, right? They're going to cycle between ferric and ferrous states. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I come down here, remember that they cycle between Fe3+, and they cycle between Fe2+, right? And so depending on whether you're transferring electrons, so in here... In here, I would be donating an electron, and in here, this would be donating an electron, right? So they're going to cycle ultimately between, this This right here is the ferric, this right here is the ferrous. So they're going to cycle between these two forms of the iron, and there's going to be a series of these iron sulfur centers, right? There's going to be a series of them. And I just drew two here, but there's more than two. It's a series of them. And ultimately, what's going to happen is... Um, ubiquinone, and again, I drew the structure in the last video, so if you want to go back and review the structure, it's there for you. But here's ubiquinone, and it's going to get reduced ultimately to ubiquinol. Ubiquinol. So ultimately what this um, pathway does is it increases the ubiquinol pool. And what we're going to find, and I, I mentioned this in the last video, the ubiquinol is ultimately going to go into complex 3. And complex 3 has another name. It's, it's cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase. And the ubiquinol is ultimately through a, a fairly complex process is going to transfer its electrons to ultimately cytochrome C and reduce it. So what have we learned in this video? Well, we've learned that the mechanism of reduction is almost exactly the same, except for remember this. The, in, in the case of succinate dehydrogenase, the, oxid the, the, the oxidant or the oxidizing agent is FAD. In NADH dehydrogenase, the oxidizing agent was FMN. So it is a little bit different, but after that, everything is the same. Everything is the same. So what are the two or what are the, the three cofactors of succinate dehydrogenase? Well, it's FAD, iron sulfur centers, and ubiquinone. And so the ultimate goal, like I mentioned, is to increase the ubiquinol pool. In the next video, what we'll look at is we'll look at electron transferring flavor protein, any or electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase. So see you in next video.